All right, so um, this is part two on why the therapeutic model will not save your marriage. And I want to emphasize that I'm talking about a model, not about people. And the people who are therapists, I'm sure many of them are well-intentioned, even if they're Christians. But at the end of the day, if someone's well-intentioned and they're using a tool set that in its nature and its design cannot help you, it almost really doesn't matter. Now, there are situations where therapists and psychiatrists are very valuable. There's a lot of chemical imbalance. There can be extreme trauma, extreme set of problems, and those are really important. But a lot of times there's a dysfunction or unhappiness um, within the marital context. And it's not because there's some deep psychosis. But here's the thing. Therapists want to find it. If you look at their manual, they have a manual that shows definitions of mental issues, and it just keeps growing and growing. And it's not surprising. Humans are messed up. Humans in the origin of sin, they're always going to have problems. We can have lists of problems. And I told my own therapist, hey, if you want to fix me before I can talk about the marriage, we'll be here for years. There's all kinds of things that I'm worried about, anxious about, things that I remember, things that feel traumatizing. That isn't really a recipe for addressing the marriage. And yet people think, oh, you got to be fixed before you get into the marriage. That's not true. Like, think about that. That's like saying, oh, they've got to be perfect before they get married. So think about the very premise of the industry which is to find and document problems and go deeper, deeper. And it's almost like, in my case, multiple cases, therapists' eyes would light up. Oh, you know, I have this memory when I was a child. Bam, the eyes would light up because, oh, we've got this talk about that. And I would speak over and over. I I don't think this is what we need. But I truly have a belief that they're trained to believe that all sorts of problems have some kind of root in childhood. And in many ways, they do with our our families of origin. But that does not mean we need to fix those. Jesus himself, even for what probably is a okay family, the man who wants to bury his parents is told, don't don't even bury them. Don't don't bury them. You've got bigger things to do. You've got to be focused on the kingdom. It's not going off and doing ministry. It's focus on the kingdom. And that's what I think was missing in all of this context. And um, I, I think this is probably hurt, hurtful for those who are in that therapeutic context of we got to fix yourself. you got to be better first before you can even deal with the marriage. But at some point, I'm feeling there's going to be a a turn in the tide after reading that one book, it planted the idea and my own experience is starting to see that. Seeking more problems to understand the wickedness of our mind will not, will not address things. It will not fix things. You will not necessarily get better. Because what you look at really is what you'll go towards. And that's certainly what happened to me. And you know the old saying when you're driving a car, and don't don't look at the area that you want to avoid crashing into. And if you start staring at it, staring at it, guess what happened? The car is going to smash into it. It doesn't mean suppressing. It's funny, you know, in the therapeutic mind, whenever I would have a therapist or therapy group, I say, yeah, you know, I don't want to focus on my issue. Oh, you're you're, you're suppressing it. No, no, no. Just because it's not my source of focus doesn't mean I'm suppressing it. But almost every therapist, when I say, yeah, I don't want to really focus on that. I want to focus on where I'm going. I want to be able to leave this past behind, as Paul says. And I want to focus on what is good and noble and true. But no, no, no. Every conversation is, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you do that, you are suppressing. You're suppressing yourself. Do you see how the therapeutic model has some challenges with this? It's almost like it's specializing in its sickness. And in uncovering your sickness, this is the tool to get your marriage well. And it's a tool which has its place in certain things. But if you went to a heart surgeon and the only tool they had was scissors and a saw, it doesn't matter how well-intentioned they are. The tool themselves is not good, and their training and skills are not good. 
So I want us to lay down and really start to think and challenge and set up the problem that it's not set up to do this. It's not set up to deal with the resiliency of this. And again, it's not a broad brush, but like with anything that has been industrialized and commodified, such as most forms of training, training which goes back to Jung and Freud, um, none of which was necessarily great um, as an origin. It's not Christian. And in many cases supports a non-Christian worldview. I don't see why we give it so much thrust. There are alternatives. And I'm going to get that to that in the next section. But but it's very important to ground an understanding of why there's a, an, a, a problem. I want to um, say that some ideas I have had are from people who are therapists and seemingly have a Christian background. And so I've pieced together elements that work. But you know, the best material has never come from that. It really does come from Scripture. So this becomes the last thing if you're a Christian. What is true? Stuff that's been put together by man with no grounding in origin with Scripture that comes from a tradition, Jungian, um, Freud, that has questionable, very questionable basis, even from a scientific basis. And so many things, even in reaction to Freud, are just reacting to a bad thing. You can react and change and improve upon a bad thing, but that doesn't mean you're closer to the truth. Do, do you know what I'm saying? And the only source of the truth is ultimately the scriptures understood well. Not everything can be solved there, but I, I am just really believing more and more that we've got to be very cautious about how um, things kind of like enter into the mainstream. A good example is um, the McKinsey Report. I think it's called the McKinsey Report. And he did a big sexual study and it influenced I don't know, generations of people thinking about sex. But only recently in documentaries, they say, oh, you know, his stuff was incomplete and actually very damaging. And he had kind of a perverted view of the world to begin with when it came to sex. And yet, I believe there are studies and practices and marriages and therapists who, who probably took that point of view and said, okay, we're going to help people based on what comes from this. And so I, I really think in this age, we've got to be cautious. And so I want, before I move into the next section, to make sure you have a grounding that's asking, well, wait a minute, I'm going to a therapist. They say they're Christian, but what are the Christian foundations around which we can build reasonable um, th therapy, ways to help people? And I'm focusing on the nature of marriage. I also think that the Christian first only has some problems too. And we're going to address those. And I encountered that when doing research on what do I do? How do I do this? But there were things that I saw that really did seem to be healthy. And they, will, they may cause an allergic reaction for many of you if you've bought into the therapeutic model and its worldview. So the most important thing from this message is to challenge are you accepting things as true because some authority says it's true versus dividing properly the word of God and using that to explore your situation in truth? This is a very hard thing. I would talk to people who are Christians who knew scripture and I bring this up and it just became, no, nope, this works and there wasn't justification we can deceive ourselves. And the only way for you to avoid problems, problems that I had and problems I think many people have had, is to really ask yourself at the end of the day, what truth is and what do you want to follow?